Hi. To begin, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand if you ever felt so stressed you heard your stomach growling. Raise your hand if you ever felt so excited you felt a flutter of butterflies in your stomach. If you ever got so hungry, you became angry. <laughs> and now, raise your hand if you actually know how these feelings came about, what they are, and why we seem to connect our emotions, our feelings, our brain, and our gut. That's why I'm here. So our gut and our brain are connected. And even though we may not think about this connection much, we experience one of the key results of this every day. The feeling of being hungry and the feeling of being full. And this might seem like something very simple, but actually it involves the interaction between our gut, our enteric nervous system, a part of our brain called the hypothalamus. It's a complicated thing. And it's really one of the major reasons why the gut-brain axis plays a huge role in our lives. Our brain and our gut are connected through the enteric nervous system. The enteric nervous system consists of 100 million neurons, but the most important one is the vagus nerve. <clears throat> the vagus nerve is the most direct pathway between the brain and the gut, but really importantly, it contains neurons that face both upwards and downwards, which allows a bidirectional communication to happen. This means that all information can get from the brain to the gut and from the gut to the brain. But the magic of what we call the gut-brain axis lies far beyond a simple physical link. Today, I want to share a story with you that unravels this connection and tells us that by understanding this connection even more, we may be able to revolutionize our approach to mental health. In the year 2004, a study was done at Kyushu University in Japan. And this study has started this entire movement of researching the gut-brain axis. The researchers have artificially removed gut bacteria from half of the mice, leaving the other half with all of their gut microbiome fully intact. They have then exposed both of these mice to a stressful stimulus. They both reacted in the same way, at least on a chemical basis. They both produced stress hormones, but the group that had their gut microbiome removed produced roughly double the amount of stress hormones. And this caused a really unexpected reaction. The researchers were able to explain it through the double the amount of hormones, but it sparked the question, how and why is the gut and the brain connected? Our gut and our brain are connected, and it's a really important thing in our lives. But how come that simply by removing a few bacterial cells in our body, we can change the entire organism's function so much? Well, as it turns out, if you counted all of the cells in your body and the bacteria that live on you and within you, you would turn out to be roughly 10% human and 90% bacteria. So by sheer numbers, Bacteria play a key role in our lives, and 80 to 90% of them are found right in the gut. So the health of our gut microbiome can determine our health, and we can impact the health of our gut microbiome by the food we eat. If we eat foods such as yogurt, kimchi, or sauerkraut, they're filled with probiotics. We are able to help the health of our gut microbiome. When you're eating a yogurt, you're not only eating a dairy-based product, you're also eating live bacterial cultures. And it's these cultures that really create all of the magic. Yogurt contains bifidobacteria and lactobacilli. And these two bacteria have the power to stimulate the production of GABA. GABA is a neurotransmitter. And the neurotransmitter has the ability to control stress and even anxiety. So clearly, these bacteria have a huge hold on our lives. Hormones and neurotransmitters are chemical messengers that are found all over our body, and they then alter the way it's functions. There are many neurotransmitters in our body that are found right in the gut, even though a lot of people do associate neurotransmitters and hormones with the brain. These include serotonin, melatonin, adrenaline, dopamine, or, as I already mentioned, GABA. 
And when you look at serotonin, 90% of it is actually found and produced in the gut. And when it comes to serotonin, what you eat really is who you are. Because serotonin, like many other neurotransmitters and hormones, is made of an amino acid building block. But serotonin is made of tryptophan. And tryptophan is an essential amino acid, which means that our body cannot synthesize it on its own, and we need to obtain it from food. Luckily, tryptophan is found in many common foods, such as turkey, eggs, tofu, seeds, butters, cheese. But if we don't eat these foods, we are not able to produce serotonin. And that has a huge impact on us, because serotonin can impact our mood regulation, our temperature regulation, our stress, our sleep, and it has even been linked to anxiety and depression. So, have you ever wondered why comfort food doesn't really tend to bring as much comfort? Well, comfort food is really confusing if you think about it. Your brain might be trying to convince you that that second tub of ice cream is basically a dairy-based antidepressant, but your gut has quite a different opinion on this. Your gut needs foods like yogurt, turkey, that it can take the chemicals it needs to build the neuron transmitters and hormones that will make us feel better in the long run. Because comfort food will raise our blood sugar, which will make us temporarily feel better. But in the long run, foods that help our gut microbiome are a lot better. So food and our gut microbiome has a huge impact on our health. And researchers have wondered whether there's an even closer reason for this. They looked even deeper at the metabolic products of the gut bacteria. Two of them involve short-chain fatty acids, such as acetic and butyric acid. And these two acids have the ability to stimulate the production of serotonin, which really does impact our body a lot. Researchers have taken two groups of mice, and they fed one group lean ground beef, which is all of the reactants needed to produce these short-chain fatty acids, while the other group was fed regular food that doesn't harm or benefit the gut microbiome in any way. They have found that the mice that eat the lean ground beef that stimulated the production of these uh, acids were more physically active and could remember more. So clearly, our gut has a huge impact on our life. So here's my question. When it comes to dealing with mental health, should we really be looking just in the brain? Or does the gut hold most solutions to this issue that we can now even imagine? Perhaps it's time to stop considering the gut as just a silent player on the other side of the body, but as one of the keys to solving the issue. Perhaps by understanding the gut-brain axis better, we may open doors to new approaches and revolutionize fighting mental health. Because as the father of medicine, Hippocrates said, all disease begins in the gut. Thank you.